Hi, I am Manuela Bonanno from Columbia University and very glad to sit here today with Radia Tamara. Radia, please introduce yourself, tell us more about your uh, institution, where do you work and what's your position? So, hello, I'm Radia Tamarat. I'm uh, working in the Institute of Radio Protection and Nuclear Safety since 2004. I've done first my PhD in cardiovascular disease in INSERM in Paris. Um, I, I was studying the, the, the vascularization, especially using treatment on, based on stem cell therapy. Uh, then I continue my uh, postdoc on Collège de France in Paris also mainly focus on the heart. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I get the position in our institution since 2004, in order to apply on, uh, to propose stem cell therapy in case of uh, skin, radio-induced skin lesion, mm -hmm. and specifically in order to stimulate the neurovascularization. Mm -hmm. I see. And so I guess um, you work in a kind of big department. Yeah. So can you give us an overview um, of the projects that you have there or that you coordinate? Yeah, so our department is basically done on radio protection and uh, there's different services, including associating epidemiological mm -hmm. studies, sorry. We are also, uh, we have uh, also studies based on the radiopathology in order to understand what is happening in the effect of radiation on normal tissue. We have also laboratories in the service uh, as uh, working on the dosimetry. And uh, my previous lab, which were working on stem cell therapy and regenerative medicine. I see. So I was very intrigued about one particular work of yours, um, using mesenchymal stem cells to regenerate bones. Mm -hmm. uh, is that correct? Can you give me more detail about that particular project? Yeah, so concerning this aspect, the bone tissue, it's a very recent work that we have begun uh, no more than two years ago. And it was specifically uh, uh, you are initiated uh, by the fact that in the clinical situation what we observe is that the patient who has been treated by uh, stem cell therapy and uh, combining surgery uh, on the smooth tissue was not enough in order to rescue the patient. Few months or few years after this patient returned back and needed to be treated for the radiosynecrosis. And based on this observation with the clinician, we are working tightly in collaboration with the hospital and the medical staff. We decided to move to a research focalizing on the characterization of the bone after radiation, the effect of radiation in the bone tissue, in order to understand exactly how the if the irradiation may damage the cells, the vascularization, in order then to propose a treatment based on stem cell therapy and uh, spe specifically on mesocomal stem cells. And why mesocomal stem cells? In order only to say that these MSC cells have the capacity, are the precursor of the osteoblasts, which are one of the cells which is composing the bone tissue. But they are still pluripotent. Yeah. So yeah. they might actually they probably preferred way to differentiate is in uh, in bone cells. Yes, they're pluripotent. They have this capacity to differentiate, mm -hmm. but they also have the capacity to secrete growth factors. Mm -hmm. They mainly known for this aspect, so this potentiality. So they have the capacity to differentiate, to incorporate the tissue, and to favor, to stimulate the, the the tissue regeneration. But we know also recent research, research have shown that these mesocomal stem cells have the capacity to secrete paracrine uh, uh, molecules as and also microvesicles which are very important for tissue regeneration. I see. So let me take just a step back. Um, you say that you have patients mm -hmm. uh, that need to be treated for um, radiation-induced necrosis. Mm -hmm. So what's the context? Uh, this patient where 
uh, at the hospital for what reason, why they did receive radiation. Was accident, are they accident patients or radiotherapy patients? Mm -hmm. So uh, in our institution, we are uh, collaborating with the hospital. The tight collaboration that we have is with different hospitals mm -hmm. because we, are, we need to face uh, irradiation, which is issue from complication of radiotherapy, of yes. also the case of ex uh, uh, overexposition due to accidental mm -hmm. situation. So in case of accidental situation, we are taught collaboration with the hospital of Percy which is uh, very near, up at, at proximity of the RSN with the medical doctors. And uh, these victims of irradiation are concerned mainly workers, mm -hmm. which are in the manufacturer plant. And they received, um, they received these irradiation overexposition due to the fact that they found uh, an arc welding, a source for arc welding quality control which uh, has been, um, how can I say, which has been found outside its storage container. Wow. That's the reason why usually they take the sound, they took it, they manage it yes, with, with their hands, hand, and they put it in the trousers. And wow. that's the reason why most of these victims have a, a lesion on the hand, on the buttock, okay. or on the leg, because they put it in the trousers, and so the effect, the symptoms are uh, appeared few weeks or few months after. Yeah, and usually these um, uh, kind of radiation sources are uh, what kind uh, of radiation sources? I mean, do they emit like uh, I don't know particles or? Yeah. These sources are uh, gamma graphy sources. Mm -hmm. So usually, and there's uh, it's iridium, it's iridium, and they deliver a very high doses. Mainly, these persons receive more than 80 or 100, and it can be more gray. Locally. Yeah, locally. Oh. That's the reason why there is a very severe lesion that we observe just after. So your idea of uh, I think it's an injection of mesenchymal stem cells yeah. that you give is to regenerate the, the, the bones, the, the whole tissue. Mm -hmm. And um, my question probably is at, which, at what stage mm -hmm. it, still, um, it still makes sense to give mesenchymal stem cells? So it's very difficult to be honest to uh, answer this question. What happens usually when the patient uh, uh, arrived in, uh, at the hospital, uh, in Percy Hospital, uh, the lesion is developed. So usually when we propose these kind of treatments, it's not in a preventive, um, a preventive strategy, it's usually in a curative. But in fact, if we take into account the fact, the, the process of radiosynecrosis, what we imagine now is to treat the patient of the smooth tissue first, and then we imagine to inject the stem cells in the bone in order to prevent the radiosynecrosis, which appears a few months or a few years after. Mm -hmm. I see. So um, tell me a little bit more about the mechanisms by which the mesenchymal stem cell can regenerate the tissue? So what we know uh, about these stem cells, because of course the mechanisms of action are very different from depending on the type of stem cells. So, or probably depending on the microenvironment of course, in which also, they are in. Of course. Uh, so what we know from the mesenchymal stem cells is they, as I told before, they are mainly due the potentialities associated to a paracrine effect. Of course, there are some studies showing that the MSC have these capacity to uh, differentiate, to incorporate the lesion, but to be honest, there is only few of them, few cells which are, uh, have this p p p possibility. Mm. What we know is that these cells also have different manner, mechanism of action. They have the capacity to uh, differentiate, mm -hmm to secrete paracrine effect. They have also the capacity to mobilize endogenous stem cells in order both all together, all these mechanisms are implied uh, uh, and have the, uh, are, uh, sorry, I'm sorry. 
So all these mechanisms are uh, implied involved in the beneficial effect of the MSC for mm -hmm. tissue regeneration. So I guess um, you are able then after, you know, there is this emergency and then you do your injection, um, how do you analyze, uh, do you take, I guess, tissues from these patients? Do you do which kind of analysis? What are your biological endpoints? So when the patient arrives at the hospital, Percy Hospital, usually with also the medical staff, we decided to make biopsies, mm -hmm. so they do immediately, immediately in order when they arrive. The stage. Yeah, we, do, we use uh, the biopsy from the patient, uh, skin, muscle, mm -hmm. bone, if in case of if the ne it's necessary. And uh, just after, we return back to the laboratory and we perform analysis, histological analysis from the skin, the muscle and the bone. Microarchitecture in case of the bone, we have several protocols in order to obtain the characterization of all the tissue and to, because each patient is a respond diff, uh, in a different manner. So that's, and we also have the possibility to collect the blood, blood uh, samples in order to make different analyses of the inflammatory, for example, the inflammatory reaction. But also we have a new field, which is the microvesicles mm -hmm. in order to understand if, if the radiation may affect, may modulate the, the extracellular vesicles, which is very important in case of a follow up and also for treatment and in our field we're trying to um, understand if this extracellular vesicle can be used as biomarkers of efficiency of the stem cells. I see. It's interesting because those uh, there is a lot of interest in uh, these uh, uh, vesicles because they might um, carry yes, exactly. uh, completely different, uh, um, um, I don't know, factors, mm -hmm. let's call exactly. them this way, that they might induce um, uh, different mechanisms, mm -hmm. and in, probably in this case of repair or regeneration of a tissue. So, um, I have just a curiosity about, you know, this uh, treatment, um, of course, is like uh, something that you do as an emergency, but um, how expensive it is. Um, is it, um, uh, well, probably you don't you use it relatively, I hope, uh, mm -hmm. not m many times, but is it an expensive thing so for, I mean, the patients? Yeah, for the moment, to be honest, uh, yes. But of course, because for each treatment, when we are at the beginning of the history, it's expensive, but of course we're now trying to make it less expensive. And our research is also focalized in the possibility to uh, improve the stem cell therapy by, uh, by discovering other kind of stem cells, not only mesenchymal mm -hmm. stem cells, in order to make it more, more uh, cheaper and, and the, 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 the aim, the main objective is to have, in our view, is to have a possibility to propose different kind of treatment, stem cell therapy, but based on different type of stem cells in order to, to adapt the treatment to the patients. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. so it's okay. No, if you want to, okay. No, I was just curious. I, I don't know how much time we have. Five minutes, I'll, I'll be quick. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder, well, for sure, there will be, uh, th there are other um, labs mm -hmm. in other parts of the world, but I, I'm thinking about France, mm -hmm. in other parts of Europe, mm -hmm. they do uh, the same kind of treatment, I guess. And if so, do you uh, talk with them, do you compare results or try to, you know, improve, uh, making like collaborations and? Of course, uh, hopefully in the case of research, we have the possibility to communicate our data and results. And we have a lot of international meeting uh, from the, for example, from the IEA and the mm -hmm. WHO. Uh, 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 agency and in this case we need each country comes 
with the treatment in case of, uh, of uh, for the treatment of victims of irradiation. And what we have seen is that several, uh, the countries who are mainly involved in this, uh, in this uh, field is South America due to the fact that also the main victims are there. And though, so we, we had to share our experience with the South Americans, particularly Argentina, uh, this last decades. And in order to transfer our preclinical and also clinical application for uh, the treatment of a patient who is suffering from uh, radiation exposition. So our uh, collaboration is very fruitful, fruitful and we have also the possibility to uh, now to imagine the, um, uh, a, um, uh, the possibility to initiate research with thesis, PhD, and I'm aiming to do that now. Uh, with South America, but also other countries, for example, US, also here in the uh, USA, where I have initiated some collaboration with uh, some laboratories in uh, USA and New York, for example, in order also to begin uh, initiate different projects in the field of radiation. Well, on that, I really wish you good luck. Thank you. Uh, much. And uh, thank you very much for sharing. Uh, all your knowledge mm -hmm. and um, thank you for participating to the Radiation Research podcast. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.